Okay, sure. I'm Steve North, and I played firefighter Colin Parrish in London's Burning. Good question. Um, I was, uh, yeah, I mean, there's a whole kind of story in that, really. I was at, I went to drama school um, in Guildford, and uh, I was basically that when you when you're at drama school at the end of your it's like a three year you know training or whatever at the end of your three year training you you do a what's called a showcase which is where you basically perform a scene in front of sort of invited agents and casting directors and um, we did that in 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 uh, in a theatre in the West End in 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 like one afternoon and then at the end of it you know you you sort of hang around and you meet whoever's there and people get kind of agents coming up to them and uh i didn't really get anybody so i was kind of thinking oh okay that hasn't gone you know it went all right because obviously some people get a lot of people um and then anyway about sort of six months later i was doing uh i went to the edinburgh festival and i did a play up there and i remember it was, this is obviously the days before mobile phones and i got a message from where I was, you know, from my, my home to say, um, uh, you know, casting directors rung, rung up and wants you to call them um, about something called London's Burning. And I, 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 I honestly thought it was a wind up. I was like, oh, right, okay. Yeah, I know this is going to be going up one of my mates. Do you know what I mean? Like calling me up. Um, and then, uh, you know, I went to, I, I sort of had this number. I wrote it down on a bit of paper and I went to the phone box. Remember that? And uh, <laughs> And I was in Edinburgh, you know, and I sort of rang this number, put in 10 P's in the in a thing. And it was uh, Corian Rodriguez, who uh, her assistant, who was the casting director. And um, I spoke, I think I spoke to her assistant or something, you know, and she said, oh, we, you know, we'd, we'd really like you to come in and um, uh, have a read of the scripts for a character in London's Burning. And I was still thinking this is like, you know, when, when's the, so I kind of played along with it, but I was waiting for the, for the kind of you know the the kind of wind up or whatever and then um i said well i'm in edinburgh uh you know obviously you're in london it's and she said well when you get back you know give us a call and we'll, we'll arrange an interview so I, I literally sort of went back got back in september um went up to south bank center uh where, where they were based in london weekend television and um i went up and met corinne rodriguez um it was just a meeting very low key at that point, didn't really think much about it. I mean, I was kind of thinking this is quite exciting, but I, I had no idea that it was a, a main character. I thought it was going to be like one episode or something. And then, um, and then, I, yeah, she said, great. I want you to come back and meet the producer. I'm going to send you some scripts. And then they sent me like, uh, you know, again, it's the days before email. They basically posted all these kind of hard copy kind of scripts of which I still have, I think a couple of them. And then, um, that was series three and obviously it was the Colin came in at the beginning didn't he right at the start you know so he had a really big episode that first episode it was like you know and then yeah I kind of read it going oh my god this is like you know kind of really good part um and then I kind of went back up and I did a reading with Paul Knight Corian Rodriguez and um they literally just got me to read through like three or four episodes I can't remember how many and then they said, great, thank you. And then I went downstairs and they rang down to the reception to say I got the job, but I, I didn't know. And I got home and um, yeah. And then I, I found out I got the, I found out I got the, the, got the job. So yeah, very long answer, but that's how I got the job. <laughs> yeah. Completely unexpected, actually. I mean, you know, when you're coming out of drama school as an actor, you know, I mean, I had no sort of sense that, this was going to happen. I mean, I was kind of thinking I'll do theatre and, you know, kind of, I mean, I've always wanted to do TV and film, but there was no kind of, you know, this really did come completely out of the blue. And actually Corinne Rodriguez had seen me in the show. The reason I said that thing about the showcase, she'd actually seen me in that. And um, she remembered, and it, it, I always, you know, I teach acting a lot now. And I always mention this. I say, you never know when someone's watched you, you know, you, you, because you might think, oh, no one saw me in this or whatever particularly with theatre but actually casting directors do and they kind of make notes on people and and keep them in the kind of back pocket you know
yeah you had you had to do like a two-week training and um at, it was at southwark i don't know if it's still there it used to be like the main training center for the london fire brigade and uh again you know i came in on my own so you know like i when when all the kind of original characters came in you know the, the they, they all obviously did the training together and then and then you know there was a sort of first series i think there was three or four more kind of people like ross boatman came in didn't he but, and um uh and, and glenn murphy you know so they again they they sort of did their training together but when i came in i was completely on my own so they just sent me there on my own for two weeks and basically it was great for the part because i i, I was put in with um a, a sort of new set of you know people like colin basically who were like these young lads who were all who were all kind of starting to become firefighters and um i kind of trained with them um and they treated me pretty much the same i mean i wasn't at that time you you uh, uh, it was still kind of very old school you know military almost and you had to march everywhere so when you were when you were walking around from like the say you went across the quad or something they all the recruits had to kind of march like soldiers they couldn't just sort of walk across and i remember thinking i i when you know like the first couple of days i was there i just sort of walked across because i was like you know i don't need to do that i'm an actor and this i remember this guy leaning out of the windows one of the officers what are you doing Fucking, you know march you know <laughs> i was like christ you know because he had no idea that he just thought because i was wearing the uniform and everything um and they all thought that was very funny yeah it was amazing actually and there was a guy actually i still keep in touch with who was on that course and shows you how old he makes me feel quite old because he's just literally retired um from the fire brigade and I, I i remember doing he was you know when he was doing his training uh it was a guy called phil horsley um and uh still 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 kind of in touch with him um yeah and i always remember there was a kid there they make you do this thing where you know the ba training the breathing apparatus you had to go through like a tunnel and um i had to do that as well and uh, they put it on you and um it's a kind of it's quite a very constricting for, for obvious reasons and you to put to cat you know to get through like a week or whatever you every single recruit had to do this and there was this guy you know he was kind of really into it and he just couldn't do it he got to the point he come he just couldn't do it and they had to say to him you know you're gonna you know if you can't get through it you're gonna have to leave and he he, he just he just had a mental kind of block on it yeah i mean it was that one i think you know it was the one where it was in the first episode and um i get kind of knocked back by hitting the mains or whatever did i put the fire out isn't it the famous line at the end of that episode um yeah i mean uh i do yeah i mean i remember that because i worked with jimmy marcus who was the kind of um and he was he kind of took me under his wing a bit he's a lovely guy um and uh yeah it was kind of i mean obviously when you're filming them you know it's quite it's quite different because they you know you you stop and start so much and then um we used to like you know it's very occasionally i mean i'm not sure that was one of them but some of them they would kind of go let us go for it and you just go into a sort of more like a live type scenario and I, and I used to love doing those they were great but quite a lot of the time you would kind of stop and then you know they'd shoot one little segment of it and then they shoot another one and then you know of course they're getting like reaction what are called reaction shots which is when they shoot your reaction to it and of course a lot of those you know that's actually just somebody with a camera standing there and then some guy with a sort of flame thing standing behind the camera to reflect it in your visor and then you have to kind of do all this stuff but you're you, you're not really doing anything other than that and then shouting sort of lines so they're kind of trying to get that 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 sort of reaction but obviously they can't put a camera operator into the fire like like behind with you know look with it back so so a lot of it's just i mean literally smoke and mirrors you know they're kind of creating the look to to do that um but yeah there were time i mean that one was like a homeless thing wasn't it and i remember we you know what was great with london's burning you, you know you shot a lot of the time on locations um they they did stuff in the studio as well obviously if you went inside somewhere that was mainly done in studios but all those kind of exteriors you know were, were shot on location and um they, yeah it was good i mean a lot of those places i mean i wouldn't be able to tell you where they are now because they've probably all been 
built on. I mean, you know, this was back in the 90s when South London was a lot less, you know, had a lot less kind of buildings and still had that. I mean, right when I started it, you know, it was still almost the, the feeling of that you still, you know, not, I'm not sure there was corrugated iron, but, you know, you, you, you always remember London, like right through the 70s and 80s, you know, it had that kind of feel um, coming almost off the back of, of, of from, war, you know, the Second World War, I suppose, you know, with all the bomb sites. But so there was a lot more kind of disused land around and that kind of stuff. And so, you know, I remember we used to shoot kind of a lot of places like that and uh, old housing estates that were going to be knocked down and all, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was some great, it was all in the scripts, you know, I mean, it, it, it was, it was good. It was good fun to, I mean, he was a great character to play because you, you could have a lot of fun with him. And I, you know, there's the, the, the bits, the, the thing that I loved about him was he is kind of like, yeah, he was really naive and a bit of a kind of green character, a bit of an idiot in a way, I suppose. But I, he he had a real kind of probably out of almost any of the characters. I think his love of the fire brigade was probably one of the, uh, you know, out of all the characters, one of the strongest. You know, he really loved it. And 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 being a, you know, fire, fire, firefighter was 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 kind of what he'd always wanted to do. You know, his uncle had been in the fire brigade and he was he was kind of always going to be a firefighter you know there was no there, never any other career for it for colin and um yeah he loved he always actually loved it he was almost too too much in, into it he wanted to call be you know he was, he was a classic kind of kind of person who wanted to run before he could walk so he, you know he, he couldn't wait to kind of get anywhere anytime there's a shout you know it was to him it was like this is gonna be great and there, there was a really nice um i think it's one of the later episodes in the first series, I remember they did that thing with the train crash. And, uh, you know, it's the first time Colin sees the reality actually of someone who's really hurt, you know, and he, he, he kind of doesn't, I don't think he's ever thought about, you know, the fire, fire brigade and that, and that sort of the firefighting, so that side of it, you know, he's always seen it as this kind of heroic kind of crack basically. And I think um, I think that was really nice in the writing because it was this moment when you you really saw him sort of completely thrown, you know, by that. Whereas all, a lot of the others, obviously, a bit more long in the tooth. You know, they're kind of upset, but they're not gonna. They've seen a lot of probably quite a lot of that stuff before. He was a lovely guy. Yeah, really sweet man. You know, um, and as I say, he took me under his wing a bit. You know, I think he was, he was quite sort of uh, paternal in a way. Um, and he, yeah, he was, you know, he'd been around the block. By the time I, you know, obviously I'm coming in as a kind of first time actor. And and this is the guy who's done things like Clockwork Orange with Stanley Kubrick. Do you know what I mean? Like, I mean, he's, he's, he's sort of, yeah, 60s and 70s films, you know, you see him pop up all the time. So, you know, and obviously um, by the time I'm working with him, he's probably, not far off the age I am now, probably. So it was kind of, um, it was, yeah, it was great. And he, 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 he was, he was a really interesting guy as well. You know, he directed and, and wrote and um, just, just, uh, just, just really kind of good to meet people like that. I mean, it was a good, you know, it was a nice, um, I, I really came into a group of people who felt very, you know, like the, they felt like a, a, a watch in a way. It felt, felt like there was a lot of, um, connections between people and um you know they kind of welcomed me in it wasn't like you sort of went and felt like oh bit, i feel a bit out of place here everyone everyone's sort of kind of kind of was on the same the same kind of feel you know and that was one of the really good things about it and and obviously at that point for me you know i mean i've realized now how that quite that's quite rare in some ways so you know when act, acting is a quite a transient job so you know, you go in and you get on with people, but you sort of always know you're going to kind of be moving on. But with that, you know, it was uh, that was my first job, so I, I didn't really, really know about that. So looking back on it now, I mean, I just thought, oh, this is a really nice group of people. But looking back on it now, I realised like how good that was. I mean, they created it's kind of like what they call an ensemble, you know, where there's no stars. You've just got you've got a group of actors who are all kind of in a way like equal billing you know you haven't got like the lead 
kind of famous person and then they're kind of leading it. I mean, Jimmy Hazeldean, I suppose, was the nearest to that. But he, I wouldn't have said, I mean, he was incredibly respected as an actor, but he probably wasn't a household name in that sense. But he had the kind, I think, from the sort of everyone there, you know, he was the one that, if you're going to put in that, you know, it was almost like the the sort of leader of the kind of ensemble, if you like to call it that. But but yeah, Jimmy was great. I mean, he really helped me out. You know, he did. He got me an agent. I remember, and um, he was just there. You know, just kind of like could ask him stuff. You know, if I was a bit confused about something, he was really good on on that. But he only did one series. I think he left after uh, my first or second series. I can't remember. I mean, he was great as well. He was I mean, a very different character, you know, and he, he had big shoes to fill because it's quite a hard job coming in. I mean, in a way, it's more easy to come in like a character like mine because you're the new boy anyway. So, you know, the acting, in a way, you're not, you're not having to act in, in that sense. But when you're coming in and you're somebody who's meant to be authoritative, in charge, you know, quite experienced, to kind of come into a group of people and, and play that role with, is a lot harder than you think because obviously they're they've all been there for a long time and you've got to be that kind of character that's got that kind of gravitas and that ability to i mean he, he also played a character that was a very strict officer um and he hit the ground running i remember you know being quite he was right on it from the off and i, I remember like kind of thinking wow that's good and then yeah he, he, he was another one you know very interesting character he, he again he was kind of writing I remember like really into his screenwriting and um you know he wanted to direct a film I think at the time and so you know he was a, there was a lot of kind of I remember talk I mean I'm really into film and he was massively knowledgeable about film I remember sort of talking a lot about movies with him and and that kind of stuff um and yeah he was good fun we had a good we you know he was good it was a good uh again he fitted in really well it's sort of uh another character I mean everyone had a what I liked about London's Burnings, everybody had a kind of distinct character. You didn't feel like anyone was, was, was bland, you know, in terms of the actors as well. Like they were, they were everyone, everyone was kind of, you know, a, an interesting dynamic as well in that sense. I mean, Jaffa was like almost, I mean, he, it was weird. Cause I think I did, my dad was in it once, like one episode, but you know, Colin's dad, but yeah he never really appeared you know he was never I think it was like one episode where he was there obviously my mum was quite a character wasn't she and I remember sort of she was popping up here and there but the father like I think he was literally in one episode very briefly but obviously Jaffa was the uncle and um from sort of Colin's point of view I kind of almost felt like he was he was more like the father figure to him you know because he he was the firefighter and he was kind of like um I think Colin had grown up you know sort of kind of hearing his stories and you know Jaffa was a bit of a you know he was kind of a kind of talked a lot didn't he you can imagine he was probably coming home and telling lots of stories and maybe making him a bit more I mean I always thought like this is where Colin got his kind of slightly romantic view of the fire brigade from because I, I sort of felt like he would have heard all these stories from his uncle about probably not so he'd lied but probably kind of embellishing you know something into a much bigger kind of uh, thing than it maybe was and in Colin's eyes you know this was like what the fire brigade was all about and actually of course a lot of the time it's quite boring I mean you're sitting around and you're or you, you know you're doing a lot of drills and training and you know that kind of stuff um it's obviously not always these like big shouts and I think you know from Colin's point of view he hadn't really got that I think he always heard from his uncle that you know they were always out doing this, doing that, you know, whatever. So, um, so yeah, I think he was quite, quite in awe of him. And, uh, you know, his uncle was kind of interesting, wasn't he? Because he kind of, I think he said, he, 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 he kind of found Colin, uh, you know, kind of not annoying, but I think he was like, you know, it's sort of like slightly encroached on his patch, maybe, I don't know. That was a, yeah, that was an interesting one, that one, because I remember getting the script. And the reason I'm asking when it was, because I, I was trying to think how long had I been in it when I, when, I, when I did it. So I reckon it was about the second series I was in, which would have been series four, 
but it might have been series five. I can't remember. Um, but uh, yeah, I remember. Um, I remember, like you know, obviously, as an actor, you know, I hadn't. I suppose you know, I'd done a bit of theatre and I'd done one series of London's Burning. And you know, now uh, if I was doing a scene like that now, you know, I'd have a whole kind of sense of how to make that work. I suppose to make it as an actor. But I remember getting the script and reading that, and I and I, I, I'm thinking like, what? You know, how does anyone stand there with a bomb? Do you know what I mean? Like, I couldn't kind of get my head around it. Um, it felt really, it felt, it felt like uh, really difficult to kind of, kind of imagine what what that would be like. Um, and I just thought, you know, I remember thinking like, I don't know, yeah, how, how's this going to work? This is like, e even Colin, you know, would he do this? Do you know what I mean? Like, I couldn't, I couldn't sort of, uh, I couldn't sort of work out how to do it. And um, and then I remember we started shooting the bit when I'm holding the bomb and I'm doing the sort of bit there. And, uh, you know, it just wasn't, when they did a couple of takes and, um, you know, it clearly wasn't working that well. I remember like feeling like myself, this is not, I'm not, I'm not getting this, you know, you kind of know as an actor, sometimes you just kind of instinctively know this isn't, this isn't working. And I remember the director was, I can't remember who the director was on it, but I remember like, they kind of go cut. And, you, and, you know, quite often as an actor, when, when you hear the way they say cut, when you're doing those sorts of shots, when they're on you, you know, you can always tell by the way they say cut, if they've liked it or not, you know, because if it's a good tip, I go like cut. Yeah. Moving on. You know, they've got that kind of, but if it's not that good, they sort of go cut, you know, there's this kind of, it's like, you can just sense it. And I remember it was one of them, you know, it was like, did the code and he's like, I heard this kind of cut. And then this is kind of silence, you know, it's like Christ, this, this is not working. And, and we kind of all know it, but no one quite knows what to do. And I remember like looking at the camera operator and he's this guy called Ken. I mean, really lovely guy. And I can't remember his surname, Ken, um, great, great, brilliant camera, you know, operating the camera. He's the main camera, cameraman on London's burning at that time. And uh, obviously he's, he's quite close to me because you know, you're shooting and, and he, he's probably the nearest person. And sometimes if you did a good take, you know, you'd look, you'd look at him and he'd just go like wink or something, you know, cause he's seeing it kind of before everybody else. And I remember like, um, kind of looking at him and so I just caught his eye and he had the camera, you know, and I just sort of went to him. I don't know about this, Ken, it's not, it's not quite working, you know? And he just looked at me and he nodded and he just went and he kind of leaning cause he's got to be really careful because obviously you, you know there's a sort of unwritten rule on a, on a film set which is only the director can direct the actors like the crew can't do you know what i mean like you can't start telling the actor a performance no like ken could tell me where to stand and say things like you know can you move this way because that's his job but you can't start giving me notes but this was like a quiet conversation i remember going to him like you know this yeah this isn't working I mean, just, just sort of very quietly to him you know this isn't working is it i don't know what and he just leaned into me very quietly he went look he said, I'm going to give you another take because he could do that. You know, he could, he could say, oh, there's a technical thing wrong, you know, something there, you know, like, and they'd have to do it, you know. And he said, I'm going to give you another take. And he said, you know what? The only way you're going to make this work, you just got to give it like 100%. You can't half do this. You've got to either do it or not do it. And he said, and that's all he said to me. And I just went, yeah, thanks, man. Let's do it, you know. And then, they went, okay. And he went, sorry, whoever the director, well, I've got to do another one, you know, camera's not wobble. And they went, okay, we'll do another one, sort of roll again. And then I just thought, right, I just got to like give this everything. Do you know what I mean? It's like, I can't, I can't sort of think, why am I doing this? It's just the what, that's what's been written. I've got to commit to it completely. And, um, you know, they said action. And I just went right into it. And then, you know, at the, the end of that one, I heard this like cut. You know, and the director's coming over, great, you know. And um I was just looked at Ken and kind of winked, you know, because I was like, man, if you hadn't said that, it wouldn't have been, you know, we'd have never got it. And that that was a really good lesson for me as an actor because I realized like, you know, you with particularly with film acting, screen acting, you you you've got to get it right on those kind of particular shots. Otherwise, you know, it's it's gone and they'll use, they'll have to use something and they'll just use the tape that's not that good. Um, so, uh, so I was really, yeah, I was, I, I learned a lot. I mean, I always remember, remember, that's what I remember about that, that episode. Um, yeah.
that was a yeah that was a i mean obviously that was the last thing i shot i, I mean uh, they actually shot it in um in 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 uh in 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 order which is quite rare in film you know obviously normally you shoot you shoot sequences kind of at different times so you know i could have easily shot that scene at the start of the schedule or whatever um but yeah they they actually scheduled it so that it was my last ever um scene that i shot so yeah it took on a whole sort of feeling you know because it, it did feel as i was getting towards it i mean i remember and we we also shot that that whole sequence in order so you know it kind of went through to that point i'd sort of shot each one before it so yeah it was feeling it was feeling quite sort of um weird by then i was starting to sort of get that sense of yeah this is coming to an end and it's weird because you know you 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 don't sort of think about it really until you get to near it and then suddenly you're going oh yeah this is now this is going to be it and then you know you, you you're basically doing it and doing it and doing it and then you do the last take and they go that's a wrap on steve you know and you get this big clap or whatever and that's it you're done you know um so it's quite sort of weird you know like, i mean I've, again i've had this obviously time lots of time since but um but that was the first ever time for me that that, that had happened and uh, because it was such a big job as well like you know four years of my life and it's all I'd ever done i kind of felt felt very sort of like oh my god you know um and yeah you know when you're it's hard when you're acting at those kinds of scenes because you know you part of you in your head is obviously always thinking this is going to be like the last time i'm doing it so you're trying to sort of go like obviously for colin he doesn't know that you know he's just going in there and whatever you know he's got no idea what's coming so as an actor you know you don't want to act the sense that you're you've got any awareness of anything you know that's that's often the hardest thing to do things like that because you can feel you can feel it in yourself and you've got to kind of try and think okay it's just like for him he's just going in this weird building and sort of coming across strange things you know there's nothing more to, to it for him than that um so yeah so it's trying to sort of get that sense of it in the acting you know rather than there and i remember yeah it was like did the kind of Morgan and Weiss thing, didn't I, with the curtain, and that was quite fun. And that was the I come in, again the director on that. It was it was actually a, a, one of the newer directors, or I hadn't worked with him. And I remember like it was good for me because he he was kind of really into sort of uh, making it something as a sort of scene. And you know, I think I, I can't remember doing a bit of work with him on it. You know, like in terms of talking it through how it was going to be shot, and that was nice to kind of end on something like that the very last shot i did actually i remember that and that was um it was actually outside when I'm, you know i'm carrying out on the stretcher on the gurney and and it was that that was the last ever shot i did and then you know they, they load me up in the ambulance and drive off and then you know the the last take of that i obviously got photos of it it was uh, john Alford and a couple of the others all like spraying me with like fire hoses when they got the car and i'm like you know, like this on the thing yeah I knew Doc because I call her Doc, but um, yeah, we, me and me and Sammy, actually, you can see there, Sammy Beckinsale both knew her because I was at drama school with her in Guildford, and Sammy and her knew each other from Nottingham. They're both from Nottingham, and so they were sort of they they kind of, they kind of went way back. And um, when uh, when the character came up of Zoe, uh, you know, I think it was two series before me. Me and Sammy were like, this would be a great part for Doc you know be fantastic you know like she's just perfect for it um so we sort of both kind of went thought right we've got to kind of try and get her in for this so we went to um the director i think it was john reardon actually because he was her first episode so they they those directors sort of cast you know maybe the actor that was coming in and uh, we went to john reardon and said look we know this actor who this actress would be great for this role and he just went, he was such a lovely guy, Johnny. And he, he was like, oh, yes, you know, great. Well, we'll get her in. I'll tell Corinne, you know. And um, so, yeah, they got her in, auditioned her. And he just came out and went, yeah, perfect. And gave her the role. So um, so that was great for me because, obviously, I, she was like a good mate of mine. And um, it meant, you know, we, we immediately had a, a really good sort of um, 
relationship on screen because we didn't we didn't we kind of friends anyway but i mean the other i mean it sounds like you know you're getting your friends in but one of the reasons that i was really pleased she got it is she's a really funny actor actress and you know she she she, she plays that kind of role i mean really really well i mean it's that i mean she's a, a very strong actor so so it was good as well like in that sense you know she sort of working with someone who um it's, it's kind of got funny bones i think Because God, yeah, I mean, there were lots, but uh, they used to do these reels, which were like, you know, at the end of each series, you'd, you'd have like the rap party and they'd, um, they'd play them. There was one, I mean, one of the funniest ones for me was that, um, I think it was like series four, it was so the second series I did. They would, um, I, was, I was kind of eating a lot then. I didn't, you know, put weight on. So I, I would always be like, they'd always, you know they'd always kind of have this thing where they have sandwiches at tea and all that you know and it was always like oh great it was a like you know that thing of like free food so oh fantastic you know and i think i just got in the habit of kind of going oh yeah i'll go and get a couple of sandwiches and and sort of munch them and um you know because we were working long hours or whatever you, you know you're not supposed to eat on set but they would let us do it so i think it was quite a lot of times and i'd be kind of eating and Ken Lowe, I'm talking the guy I was talking about, the, the camera operator, he, he started sort of subtly turning at the camera over. And I didn't realise it. So every time I was eating, he was turning over. And then um they were getting the editors to cut cut that out. And then at the end of the series, we did the rap thing and they showed the blooper reel. They just cut in all these shots of me eating all the way through it. So it's kind of like and it, it's like about 20 different shots, you know, sandwich here. Like and I kept sort of looking around and going, like, have you got the camera on so that was quite funny um i mean bloopers as a rule you know you know if it's a like line or something that like, actors kind of hate that because often that's a bad you just get kind of get a line you can't say or something you don't really want to watch that back again because when you're doing it that can be a bit of a nightmare um but all those kind of ones where people drop something or fall over and stuff i remember there was <laughs> yeah it's a thing of getting the giggles you know i mean that's always a good one you got to kind of hold on to it that 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 can be quite a big one yeah yeah there's like i mean it was it was a lot i mean it was that thing with you know you kind of um had to kind of be professional but they did on that series they did allow like a, a few that were like really funny there was a great one that didn't involve me but i was there when it happened which was absolutely brilliant and again it made the blooper reel which was sean blowers who played um hallam he was like king wind-up merchant so, you know, he was known for like kind of kind of playing really good wild up some people. Um, so there was this sense that people wanted to sort of like get one on him. And there was a really <laughs> they, they did a scene where he was walking by a swimming pool with a guy. And I think he was like, you know, he was either an extra or he, he had a very small part. So he, he was an actor like, and maybe had a couple of lines. And Sean, obviously, big main character and i think they said to this guy on the next take we're going to do another take just suddenly spin around and throw him in the pool because you know they wanted to kind of get a shot of sean getting in the pool and so this actor's like obviously thinking like okay <laughs> but you know probably like quite worried because it's like one of the main characters and then they went action and they've got it on the reel and you see him walking and what happens is, is they're doing this scene and you see this guy just like flick his eyes up at Sean because he obviously thinks I'm going to have to do this now. Do you know what I mean? And, and Sean clocks it and, he, and he's great to take, and you just see him like clock it and he realises immediately what's about to happen and he spins around and then chucks the guy in the pool and then walks up to the camera and goes, yeah, like this. And that was like, I think that's probably one of the best ones I saw. So Jimmy uh, Hazeldini, he, he was obviously, um, I think I mentioned this in the, in the last one. I, I, I don't think I did actually, but in the, um, so when I joined London's Burning, uh, this is this this was quite important actually for me, is that I, I think I mentioned in the last, when we spoke before, or, you know, when I, when I did my first episode, this goes right back to then. I came on set and um, I hadn't, as I said, you know, uh, done any screen acting before. And obviously you walk on a set like London's Burning, um, they used to shoot it on uh, what's 16 millimeter film. So obviously nowadays, you know, most things you see are shot on um, 
I shot on video. Uh, you know, obviously it's got to a point now where techn techn tech the technology has kind of made it, you know, incredible sort of four HK or whatever. Um, but at that time, they shot London's Burning on what's called film. Uh, obviously, cinema film would be 35 millimeter, but you had something called 16 millimeter film, which means they were actually shooting on real film going around, you know, spooling around the camera. Um, and that was a great sort of learning curve for me as a screen actor, because, you know, I got to shoot on uh, sort of a, what would be, you know, quite, quite old school filmmaking. Um, but when I walked on set, um, uh, for the first time, you know, that meant there was a really big crew because if you're shooting on film, you know, you had a lot of people around the camera. Um, obviously, they had a lot of kind of stuff they had to sort out with the set. And and so, you know, it's quite a daunting sight when you actually go on set for the first time because you have this kind of crew of people all sort of looking at you. Um, and I remember being quite nervous and um, thinking, Christ, you know, don't really know what I'm doing here. <laughs> and uh, I went up to the director who was Jerry Mill. And I said to him, you know, uh, he said, welcome and nice to meet you. And I said, obviously, I said very quietly to him, um, I've never done any uh, uh, screen acting before. It's actually my first day on a set. And um, he, he was really good. And he just went, don't worry, you'll be fine. You're playing a new boy. So, you know, it's going to read into the character anyway. So I wouldn't worry too much. But he said, if you want to learn anything, and he said, what I would do is for a few days, just when you're not actually working on something, just stand behind the camera. And he said, and watch that guy there whenever he's he's on camera. And he pointed at Jimmy Hazeldean. And um, he said, you know, that that you'll learn as much as you need to by watching him work. And I always remember that. And, uh, and obviously, Jimmy was a really, you know, respected actor outside of London's Burning. I mean, he had a an amazing career. I'd already seen him in this thing called One Summer, which was uh, a really big show for me at the time, which was about the, the first job ever David Morrissey was ever in, uh, where they played, uh, it was about these two Liverpool kids who sort of ran away from home and, and Jimmy played this guy who kind of took them in. Um, but, you know, he'd, he'd worked with Jack Rosenthal, he did the original series before, I mean, he'd done all sorts of stuff. And he was great and he, he just... Um, yeah, he kind of took me under it. Didn't take me under his wing so much as he just let me kind of watch him. He's a very self-effacing, modest guy. You know, he wouldn't, you would never sort of uh, big himself up in that way. Um, but really good to watch. And he, he had this ability to just sort of be on camera and be very natural. Um, and then in the um, in my last episode, in my final series, he he'd started to move into directing, and he directed, I think, two or three episodes in that series of that of that would be series six maybe two or three i can't remember and uh i remember you know i i, I saw one of, one of your tweets did you uh decide to leave or were you written out and i did actually decide to leave that was my choice they had all these storylines for colin which were going to involve him becoming a driver that was the big thing so if i had stayed in in series seven there was a whole storyline which was going to involve colin learning to uh drive an appliance so that was kind of where it was heading um but I just felt like, you know, it was my first job, as I said, and I was very lucky to get it out of drama school. And I was sort of thinking, I've done four series. I, I, you know, as an actor, I need to kind of do some other stuff. And I wanted to do theatre and all that, you know. So it was a big decision, but I still feel kind of it was the right one. Um, anyway, when I came to actually do the last episode, um, you get the scripts about a month before for the, you know, for the final ones. And uh, Jimmy came up and said, oh, they're going to they give me your last episode to direct. And I was just like, all oh, right. And he said, um, and he just said, you know, I, I feel it's, it's, it's great to, to, to do it. You know, we'll, we'll really sort of make it something. And I was just like really, felt it felt like a real nice thing for me to have, you know, for thinking of that first day four years before when I'd walked on set and Jerry Mill had said, you know, watch that guy and pointed at him. And then I had Jimmy kind of directing the, the last episode. Um, and it was, uh, yeah, it was a really nice way to kind of finish my, my London's burning journey, I suppose, you know, um, and then very sadly, of course, he died um, in 2002. And um, that was a massive shock. And, uh, you know, um, I went to the memorial and all, all the cast of London's burning were there at the memorial for him. Um, and, you know, he's very, very, very good friends with people like um, Sean and Blowers and, and, and Richard Walsh. I mean, they, 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 they went back years, you know, and um, yeah, it was great. Actually, off, off, Offset, you know, him and Richard Walsh were a bit like a double act. You know, they 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 were very funny together. They'd had this kind of um, Malcolm and Wise kind of relationship, really. It was, and they were great great mates. 
um and uh yeah he, he was a he was a good guy very nice guy and um, great actor series five he started directing yeah. yeah i always remember his first episode he directed actually i, I didn't i forgot it was series five and um i can't remember what it, what it was you'll probably know more than me but i remember in that episode uh we used to do the, the, you know the mess scenes they call them which is when we're all sitting around a table and um you you showed that clip of the one where we're all laughing i thought someone posted that one i mean that was a very funny one um because you have to shoot all those scenes you know like uh, as i was saying you know e each of you gets a shot where you're laughing so we all had to go around the table doing a laugh you know and then they cut it together and that's why uh, rupert fell off his chair but um in the uh, one Jimmy did, he had a mess scene. And I remember he did this shot, which was like basically all in one take. So rather than doing that, which is shooting lots of different shots, and um, then they cut it all together in the edit, he basically shot the whole scene, I think, almost in one one shot. So it's a bit like sort of a homage to Scorsese or something, you know, like he does in Goodfellas. <laughs> But they, I mean, great shots, but really hard to set up because everyone has to get it right. You've got no room for any mistakes anywhere, like not just the actors, I mean, the crew as well, you know, like the focus and all that. So it's all the sort of composite parts of filmmaking come into play. And um, I remember that was his first like mess scene and um, all the crew were kind of like, all oh, right, OK. <laughs> and he did this shot and he pulled it off. Um, it was great. But yeah, he's obviously... Uh, kind of paying homage to his uh, directing heroes. <laughs> Thank you very much for asking me. Yeah, it's great to uh, talk about it again. It's amazing how much you remember, actually. You know, because I was thinking, like, oh, God, I hope I remember stuff. Um, but yeah, it was it sort of comes, comes flooding back, yeah.